Well, hello and welcome to this edition of EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor for episode 94. Thank you very much for joining me for to cover a few stories from the last show over the last well, week and a half or so as I try to continue to get episodes out. Hope everybody's doing well with some reopening after the lockdowns and uh, are continuing to see what's going on in the EV landscape. So let me get into a few uh, stories that I have for you today. First article came out uh, from a website that I follow, Inside EVs, a great website. Talked about uh, a ranking of the best and worst kind of EVs when it comes to battery degradation. And these are numbers that were provided by Select Car Leasing and Geotab. I believe these are North American numbers. They analyzed about 6,300 electric cars for a period of time, and they've come out with this list. So here's the top 10 for the first year of battery degradation. And you may be surprised to see Tesla not at the number one spot. <laughs> Very close though when you talk about zero, uh, the Chevrolet Bolt at zero percent degradation over one year versus the Model 3 at 0.6 percent, so not even one percent. Still re really, really low. Um, you see some other notables, the Nissan Leaf at not even one percent and the rest going down to 1.2 for the top 10. So pretty uh, pretty incredible when you think of only 10 years ago that we really started to get into mainstream EVs and how much we've progressed since then in the technology. You know, I get a lot of people comment about the leaf and degradation and, you know, talk about the, the lizard pack and going back to the history. And yes, again, with any early technologies, there are going to be hurdles to overcome. But, you know, if you look at the uh, this chart here, which focuses specifically on the Nissan Leaf and the battery degradation comparison across the models, you can see that they've really improved their model line over the years. So sure, it's pretty high after seven years at 20 percent still within the warranty uh, period, I may add, which I believe is 33% uh, over eight years or 100,000 miles. So uh, for the 2013, so as you can see, um, really, you know, year one now on the uh, 2019 at 1%, 3% uh, for the 2018, which is pretty well, uh, in fact, 5% for year two, and I'm at about 5% after two years uh, on my leaf. So this uh, seems to be a bang on, and that's, you know, with, in my case, over uh, almost 45,000 kilometers now, um, so, you know, interesting that Geotab seems to have this bang on. So pretty good, even for the Nissan Leaf. And then when we look at the, the bottom 10 on the ranking, we can see that the Outlander doesn't fare too well after one year. It degrades about 4%. Um, again, I don't have specifics on miles driven, all that kind of stuff. You can go check out uh, the website for more information, but it's just interesting to see these model lines with the Ford Fusion being uh, the best of the bottom 10. I guess actually, yeah, the best of the bottom 10 for sure. And then it goes from there. So uh, the whole point of this is that just to assure you that battery technology is getting much, much better with every year passing, it continues to get more stable, whether or not it's actively cooled or passively cooled. Obviously, actively cool has a lot of more uh, benefits and uh, features and potential uh, long-term positives. But, you know, under under very millions of use cases, regular use cases, those that are not actively cooled can fare quite well. So hope that's uh, helpful information for you. Now, with the lockdown and the pandemic situation, we're seeing a lot of countries that are realizing the health benefits of less smog. And I think they're using some of that information to accelerate uh, EV transition plans. And Greece has uh, came out uh, with an announcement from the Greek government that they want to extensively uh, promote EVs and subsidies to foster electric mobility within the country. The goal is for one in three new vehicles purchased in Greece to be electric by 2030. So within this decade, as the country introduces buying premiums as well as advancements in charging infrastructure. Now, they've Greece, the government of Greece has set up a hundred million dollar um uh, 100 million euro, excuse me, fund for purchasing premiums over 18 months. So we'll see how long that fund lasts and they may actually retop it up. The fund specific, specifically targets people that want to buy electric cars by offering a subsidy of 15% of the purchase price. That's pretty good, actually. Uh, in the case of electric taxis, the state will cover up to 25% of the cost. Um, and with tax, tax breaks and everything, it, the average is about $10,000 euros, 10,000 euros cheaper uh, overall uh, with the subsidies. And there's also an exemption from some parking fees for two years as well, which I guess is a big deal in Greece. Right now, EVs only make up less than 1%. In fact, it's about 0.3% of uh, vehicles that are on the road today are electric vehicles. 
And with regards to charging stations, of course, if you're going to promote EVs, you have to have more infrastructure to get people to bite on that. So the Greek energy supplier PPC, along with some other partners, are going to install a thousand charging stations throughout Greece in the next two to three years. And the medium term, over the medium term beyond that, about another 10,000 charging stations. Who would have thought? So great to see Greek uh, Greece uh, pursue a more clean strategy. And if anybody uh, from the country has more information to add, please uh, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Quick update on Petro Canada and Electrify Canada, a couple of our large sub, uh, charging providers now that they've rolled up. Petro Canada has uh, reached their milestone by uh, deploying their last station in Victoria, or sorry, in Vancouver in British Columbia. Uh, they're pro they probably will look to increase that into more northern latitudes, but for now they have completed the cross Canada coverage for their uh, ride the lightning, as you see, uh, the lightning highway uh, for DC fast chargers. Electrify Canada as well is now pushing into British Columbia as they advance across Canada from the east to west by uh, looking to install nine new EV charging stations this year. The first one has already gone online in the city of Merritt at a Canadian Tire and others include coming to Abbotsford District of Hope, Golden, Kamloops, South Kelowna, Revelstoke, Salmon Arm and Squamish. All beautiful fantastic places. I've been to most of them so great to see. Again, good to see more charging infrastructure by other uh, by other providers that have really solid networks. And um, if anybody has visited one of these stations and wants to provide some comments, I'd love to hear from you as well. Announcement that I got from Volkswagen as a press release that they want to increase their stake in QuantumScape. Now, QuantumScape is a, um, a battery manufacturer and doing a lot of R&D, and they want to add another additional investment of 200 million U.S to focus on solid state battery development. Um, the goal is to drive forward the joint development of, of course, solid state battery technology, which everybody believes is going to be the next thing beyond lithium ion. Um, and also, just as an FYI, now VW has been collaborating with QuantumScape for some time. Uh, since 2008, they've had a joint venture as a minimum for industrial level production. In fact, their history goes back to 2012 that they've done some collaboration. Really, the focus is on long-term strategic partnerships to help VW move into that uh, technology when the time is right and when they have the, that uh, technology ready. So good to see, again, o major OEMs continue to invest in R&D and uh, in joint development of solid state battery technology because I do think that that's where we're heading. Few pictures here of the ID4. Some pictures that were leaked, I guess, from Europe. I'm not sure where this. That must be from Europe because that's where they're being built. Um, of course, the ID4 is a the next Volkswagen MEB E all electric platformed vehicle that's going to hit North American shores uh, next year sometime or in 2022, depending on how things go. Um, so here are some pictures as you're seeing me talking about that Volkswagen about that vehicle. It's a standard uh, crossover SUV type of vehicle. Uh, looks pretty good. Looks pretty modern without being, I mean, too much like, uh, hey, I'm an AV, EV. Look at me. It's supposed to blend in. Um, it is, again, the second major EV that VW will bring out after the ID3 that's already going on sale in Europe. And it's supposed to come, as I mentioned, sometime in 2021. Could be pushed. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But I really hope that VW can commit and hit that target date. This is based, of course, on the Cross platform that uh, they were flogging at auto shows and announcements. So good looking vehicle. Looks pretty nice. Um, and I'm sure that it will do quite well. Quick update about the Fiat EV, the Fiat 500 EV. Um, you can now order those in the UK starting at 26,995 pounds. You also get a well, three kilowatt uh, wall box included in that purchase. So you actually get a home charging station that you can set up. Um, the current model right now available is the La Prima model. It's a special launch edition that you can order at that price. Uh, comes with about a 42 kilowatt hour or so battery pack, uh, giving a WLTP range of 320 kilometers. 199 miles and a pretty small package fast charging up to 85 kilowatts and so forth so if anybody uh, has one of these on order and they're getting timelines for deliveries uh, please uh, sh either shoot me an email or put it in the comments because i'd love to be able to track that 
Citroën has uh, come out with an, another all-electric uh, uh, crossover called the EC4. Uh, they're going to actually ha have a more formal announcement of it at the end of this month on June 30th to do an unveiling. Um, it's a model that is confirmed and it's based on the CMB underpinning platform, which other models like the Peugeot uh, E208 or the e and the E2008 are based on. Um, no other features on that, but it'll probably, uh, the estimates are that it'll have a similar battery pack and powertrain to those vehicles, consisting of 136 horsepower, 260 newton meter, or 192 pound feet of torque from a single uh, electric motor, uh, drawing, a, drawing from about a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, giving a WLTP range of about 310 kilometers, 193 miles. EPA will be a little less, so not bad. Uh, again, just great. Great to see more electrification coming from all different manufacturers. Now, I haven't talked about buses for a while. I know that I continue to hope to work on a story about BYD. My uh, information source uh, is pretty busy right now. So uh, that's the delay in me getting that information out. But I will get it out sometime this year, I'm sure. When we uh, when the dust settles from the pandemic, we'll be able to get that going. But I continue to track some of them. Here's a noticeable one from Sweden. The Swedish public transit operator of V-Bus, or Vibus, uh, has placed an order from Volvo buses for 49 purely electric. These are articulated buses. Uh, the vehicles will be used in the Swedish city of uh, Jönköping, if I pronounce that, or Jönköping, uh, from summer of 2021. Um, they've uh, The model is the 7900 electric articulated, carries up to 120 passengers. Of course, with the pandemic, they may have restrictions now for distancing for the foreseeable future, but ideally that's the maximum capacity load. Um, they don't give an exact capacity of the battery packs, but it's estimated to be close to 400 kilowatt hours uh, to give them a decent all-day range. They're also building uh, 10 fast chargers, uh, each with 450 kilowatts within the city so that the buses can charge throughout the day. So it's all good. Glad to see more cities uh, adopting these uh, kind of buses. And finally, another electric vehicle is not very much a car, but uh, DBT, uh, sorry, DPD, that's correct, Switzerland gets an electric truck that has 680 kilowatt battery. So this is from a company called Design Work, um, and they, the manufacturer claims it can reach up to 760 kilometers, which is outstanding for that. Now, the reason I talk about this story, because right now this would be the largest truck battery in Europe at that capacity of almost 700 kilowatt hour of capacity and the first in the world to be used commercially in this form. Um, it's of course based on a vehicle truck chassis and truck base as most of them are. Um, again, uh, as I said in the last uh, uh, story, the purpose is to eliminate diesel costs is a big savings when you look at diesel fuel of course uh, exemption from heavy goods vehicle taxes are pretty important uh, to this swiss company as well and uh, they've a target and of course the economic payback that you get and the whole green element that you can flog as well um, now the this uh, vehicle the logistics 18e will initially be used on a route um, that should cover about 80,000 kilometers per year um, and saves about 72 tons of carbon emissions per year. These are greenhouse gases that do not go into the greenhouse. So I love to hear these kind of stories, love to hear use cases where the commercialization now of electricity is becoming much more thought and much more prevalent because there is more choice coming to the market as prices come down and as uh, companies continue to build these. So great to see. If anybody spots one of these or has more information to add, let me know in the comments. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully uh, you're enjoying that I'm helping to educate minds one tailpipe at a time. That's what I try to do. Again, if you're uh, uh, following me on YouTube, if you haven't subscribed, please do. It would mean a lot if you did. And uh, thank you if you want to like or dislike. It's up to you. Put some comments. I always read the comments and I try to respond to each and every one of them because they are important. Thank you very much for that. Of course, always a humble thanks to my Patreon supporters. Um, you guys keep me going as well, uh, it, it, especially during these times. I, I get it. You know, a few bucks a month uh, is every Everybody's getting tight, so you know, I'm certainly appreciating. So thank you very much for that. Um, of course, continue to stay safe as we're coming out of lockdowns and into that. You know, do your part. 
we will continue to, by the sounds of things, have social distancing and all kinds of other measures in place for quite some time. So please follow your local health authority and public uh, and government guidelines. And I believe that that's it. Uh, now that we're coming into uh, into the first days of summer here officially, I want to wish everybody the best for the summer as we continue to open up and get out, get some fresh air if you haven't and if you can. Um, I did a quick Instagram post the other day about I uh, went bike riding and uh, yes, you can put bike racks on EVs quite easily. So make sure you check your vehicle manufacturer loads um, and the bike rack, of course, and the hitch, what loads that it can carry and make sure everything aligns and give yourself some margin of error. But they work quite well. So until the next show, I want to wish everybody all the best. Uh, stay safe and, uh, you know, keep uh, keep energized about the EV market. You know, it will continue to grow over time as we see from these stories of more adoption and more interest in electric vehicle technology. So until the next show, hope everybody does well and I'll see you when I see you. Take care. Bye-bye.